I have to keep it all the way real. The Bible, you can read the Bible and it can be seen as contradictory in some parts. Oh, yeah. Do you, oh, you didn't expect me to say that, huh? Yes, it can seem that way. But does that mean that it's so? No. The Bible seems that way to the untrained eye. It seems that way to those who don't have the Holy Spirit. It'll seem that way if you've never been born again. You have had to you have to have been born again in order to. And once you do that and you start understanding, you've been through some things, you've been in the dark. You can under start understanding why the Bible is written the way it's written, because it could, you know, people could have took certain things out and manipulated people, put certain things. No, everything's left in for a reason. For it wasn't. You think it was left in for people to be to, to be like, oh, well, this seems confusing. Oh, this. Is, no, you think that? No, the Lord did that for a reason. And that reason is for the believers only to have the understanding and unlocking of the Bible. There's not going to be many people that is going to understand this because you have to possess the Holy Spirit. And I mean, fully understand it. That's why you don't. Everyone's not called to preach. You don't. And I mean, I'm not saying that you're not going to have an understanding of the, the main theme. And that's that um, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die that we may have eternal life if we believe on him. But other things, there's there's many things that are hidden to the untrained spirit in the Bible. There's many things. And you hear people taking the Bible out of its context many times. I, I see this on social media. A lot of Christian forums are just full of infighting and confusion. And the reason is not the word of God. It's because there's arrogance. There's people who believe that they don't need a teacher. It's people who believe that they know more than um, than they know more than the living God. It's people who believe that they know more than the prophets. It's people who try to conform God's word to believe what they want. You have there's a lot of debate and infighting on once saved, always saved. Can you just can we just continue in sin and still be saved and sealed in Christ? Can we also can we have our name removed from the book of life? Well, this is what I mean by two different things in the Bible that you can find contradictory. But if you have understanding of the spirit, you can come to the proper conclusion. And that's let's just go ahead and dive into that. For example, I don't want to make this video too long. Once saved, always saved. In the book of John, chapter 10, verse 28, it says, They shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. On the surface, this can seem that it's true that once saved, always saved. Again, the Bible verses in John, chapter 10, verse 28. A lot of people use this verse to try to justify that. It says, They shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. This is once you've uh, those who belong to Christ is what Jesus is saying. So once we become Christ, we chose uh, Jesus. Once Jesus Christ un, uh, gave us the Holy Spirit and we started to follow him. We believed in him and started to follow him. That would mean if only this if only this verse was in the Bible, that would mean that we would always be saved. We could do whatever we wanted and. You know, no one could snatch us out of God, out of Jesus's hand. We could just pretty much just go about and be like unruly children. OK. In John chapter 15, verse four says, Jesus exhort his disciples abide in me and I in you. And further in John 15, chapter six, it says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned again. It said, if anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and he is withered. So those are two contradictory things. Do you see? But 
if you use the Holy Spirit's discernment and listen, you know, if you're willing to be taught, you're willing to learn from the word and not just spout out want to be right and just spout or spout out belief then we can go ahead we can get somewhere as believers and christians you know we can start to shape this world we have to be on one accord so look at what i just read to you i read to you two different things you know these are but they are both in the they're both in the bible and what do we do with those two things we put them together and we use the spirit of discernment. We also have further, we also have further uh, Bible verses that can validate that salvation is not unconditional. We have to make it to the end. We have to stay in Christ. We have to keep the faith. Some of us will fall off. And it says every promise of salvation in the scripture has a condition. If we fulfill the, con these conditions, the promises are ours. For example, in Colossians verse 1, chapter 21, verse 23. No, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 21, verse 23. It says, and you who come once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now he is reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you continue in the faith. That's a condition there. You have to continue in the faith. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, uh, verse 19, this is, it says, Paul refers to some who by rejecting a good conscience has made a shipwreck of their faith. That's clearly not once saved, always saved. These people have faith. So do you understand? I don't have to go further. You understand, but I will go. I will read you this last um, because this is a good one here in Hebrews chapter three, verse 12 through 14. We are warned. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you of an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You can be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, for we have become partakers in Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, do you see the condition again? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end, then we will attain um, eternal life. We'll attain the gift of, of, that Christ had, that God has for us. That's a condition behind that. Yes, we have an advocate with the Father in Jesus Christ. If we're genuinely sorry and we have repentance, if, you know, and we repent, then there is an abundance of forgiveness in Jesus. But this, it is a danger, you know, that we have when we get content and we feel like we can just keep on, keep on sinning. We can just, we can continue in sin and God will give you a time for that. And after a time, you'll get cut off. Your life will end. You don't want to die in your sins, thinking in your self-righteousness. That's not what, you know, Jesus Christ died for. You know, he died for you to have full repentance. That was his exact reason for coming to this earth. So I just wanted to, you know, go ahead. I can go on. There's more Bible verses than this. Then um, you can look at that. There's two different things in the Bible. You have um, Jesus Christ who told you that he came not to, to do away with the word. Everything in the word he validated. Jesus Christ could have came and told you that what the father said wasn't true. That this that this did happen with the prophets Moses, that that didn't happen. He didn't say that. He validated everything, the events that occurred. And he said that he came to that he came to embody exactly that he wasn't there to change the word of god but he was embodying that and he wanted us to embody that and that's in um you know following um, the command following god and following and, and doing his will that's what jesus christ came for so that we can understand he, he followed the father's will perfectly but that's what we should be doing striving to be like christ 
But at the end of the day, Christ Jesus has the same spirit of God the Father. They're not one in, you know, they're not different beings. They have the same spirit. And that's another thing. You can look at that if you don't have the Holy Spirit of discernment, you will totally that's how a lot of people totally miss the gem of Christianity. They totally miss the truth in Christianity of Jesus Christ and his purpose, the reason he had to come. This was all spoken about and written about in the Old Testament. Jesus came and fulfilled that prophecy. But Jesus Christ was needed. He came at a certain time at a needed appointed time for humanity. You won't again, people don't understand the doctrine of the Trinity. The Trinity isn't in the Bible. But if you would understand that God is everywhere, like God is God is a spirit. He's not like men like God can can do all things. He's out. He can manipulate this reality. He's outside of this reality. He can manipulate the things in this reality. The Holy Spirit is a part of God. You know, the same way God hears a prayer over here, the same that's and then he hears it in another country of down here. Like God is everywhere. That's how he operates. The Holy Spirit is a part of God. Jesus Christ is a part of God. His spirit is in Jesus, was in Jesus. He still was on the throne. The, while Jesus was operating, everybody was still getting blessed. Everybody was still breathing and living all across the world. So you have to have spiritual discernment to understand these things. You know, Christian apologists, like we know, we know the, we study theology. We've died, We've dealt with all of the hard things in the Bible. You know, there a Christian. There's been every, and I guarantee you this: for every question you have, there's an answer for it. There is online. You may not want the answer. You may not even like it. It's not up to you to like it. You understand? But this is the answer. You hear people. You know, when they ask the Christian things, they try to, they try to bait them into into silly arguments. You know, and that's why us as Christians, we don't even need to entertain it. The Lord says, don't present your pearls before swine. It gets tiresome, you know, presenting the gem of life to, to unbelievers or to people with hard hearts. Some people just have hard hearts and they just don't want the truth of the living God. They don't even want to accept that. But that it, 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 that's not... It's not about you, you know, what we want. Like I said, Christian apologists, they teach these things. They teach about God and the things of God and defend the faith. They 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 explain is what they you know, they explain everything. The reason for the belief, all of these things, the Bible could have if if this was so such a or if the Bible was a ruse or something to control men, the one thing that they would have done was take out anything that seemed contradictory anything that seemed like it would um would would hinder somebody from from just from just following gullibly like hook line and sinker you know it would leave the things out where people said that they just didn't know and god told them to go about your own way i'm not you know some things you're not gonna get understanding of they would have just left that out I mean, clearly, it's, there's things for that you could have just like people like things today to tickle their ears. God could have created a message. Satan, see, Satan has these messages. That's all these false religions. That's why people run to them and gravitate to them because it tickles their ears. It's something that they already want to believe. You understand? But they don't want to believe in the Christian God. They don't want to because they it's contrary to, to, to the lifestyle of men and women. It's contrary to, 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 to the lifestyle of men and women today. You understand? Because our nature is sin. That's it. Like people don't want like shine. It's like shining a light on vampires when you give the word of the living God. So, but no, they didn't leave out any of those things. God put in the good, the bad and the very ugly. Every, that, but it's all the truth. This is all for your edific for our edification and study. 
this is for our ponderance. We should be you know, meditating in this word, learning from these from these things, not trying to change them, but getting better understanding of why, you know, that they're there. And the Lord spoke these things. You know, why the the this will give you when you can see this is why the Bible is written this way. When you contrast the one with the other and you put them together, you'll get the true meaning. Jesus spoke in parables. It's a reason behind that. See, you he only wanted his children to hear him. He said, those who have an ear, listen, that's what it is. That's what's going on right now. Those who have an ear to listen, they'll hear. They'll hear the word. They won't miss these gems. Those who have an ear, they hear a person when, when he's preaching the gospel, saying, you know, preaching that uh, Jesus Christ came to earth and died on the cross for our sins, for the sins of mankind, and rose again from the dead. So that we all can, he conquered death, so we'll have a chance to do that. And we can stand in front of the Father with Jesus as an advocate for us. Because we're sinly, we're sinful. We all were done. God was done with humanity. We're sinful beings. God's not happy. You understand? And we have to do the things that are pleasing to God. And one of those, the, the main thing is, is being following the image of Jesus Christ, being renewed in the image of Jesus every day, every single day, every second, every minute. We can we have to do that. And you won't miss those gems like I can go on and on. You have you know, you have many things again, Jesus, pretty much they thought the people in the in biblical times thought Jesus Christ had a devil. They thought Jesus Christ, they were calling him a devil. They thought he was the devil casting out devils. That's how he was able to do that. That's what they believed at the time. They thought Jesus Christ was Satan. Isn't that contrary to Jesus Christ's whole character? And everything that he did, being selfless, why would Satan do that? But it's just another one of those things, you know. People can start looking at bad as good if you have the wrong heart. You won't understand these hidden truths of God if you have the wrong heart. You don't have the if you don't have the spirit of the Holy, the Holy Spirit within you, you're not gonna get this stuff that the Bible is teaching. You're going to keep being swayed by people on the Internet. You're going, you know, your foundation, your faith isn't built on a rock. You know, it's built on like a straw house. So you bounce from you bounce from person to person, panel to panel, channel to channel. Oh, you got this great. Now, all oh, this. Oh, you're going to be in a cult by the end of the by the end of your life. You got to really get some spiritual grounding. And that's called Jesus Christ. So with that being said, I'm going to end the video. Peace and blessings to the hearers and doers of the Lord's word. This is The Awakening. I am Solikin. Peace.